important concepts we learn with production possibility curve lesson are allocative efficiency and productive efficiency. So you need to understand what is the difference between productive efficiency and allocative efficiency. Not only that, how to demonstrate allocative efficiency and productive efficiency using a production possibility curve. Today, in our production possibility curve lesson, we are going to learn about productive efficiency, allocative efficiency, and types of shifts in a production possibility curve. What is productive efficiency? Look up the production possibility curve we have here. We have non-manufactured goods and manufactured goods. So, in this economy, the two goods they are producing, non-manufactured goods and manufactured goods. If this economy wants to increase, the quantity of non-manufactured goods, they should move upward from 0 to 50. If they want to increase the quantity of non-manufactured goods, they need to allocate more resources from manufactured goods to non-manufactured goods because the amount of resources this economy can have is limited in supply. Therefore, if they want to increase the quantity of non-manufactured goods, they need to decrease the quantity of manufactured goods from 40 to 0. So you can see, due to the scarcity, an economy cannot increase the quantity of one good without decreasing the quantity of another good. This concept is known as productive efficiency. If someone asks you to show some productive efficiency points on a PPC curve, any combination of goods on the PPC curve you can recognize as productive efficiency points. So in this graph point A, B, C, D or E can be recognized as productive efficiency points for this economy. is allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency shows a particular mix of goods the society produces. Also that represents combination that society most demands. If you look at our production possibility curve, now we all know all these points, point A, B, C, D, or any point on the PPC curve are examples for productive efficiency points. But out of these combinations, the economy can choose only one combination. That combination is depending on what the society is demanding. Let's assume this economy is choosing point D as allocative efficiency point. How do we find this point D? That is actually done through interaction between demand and supply. If you look at these two graphs, you will be able to understand the first graph which shows allocative efficiency point, point D in this economy. How did we find this point D? For this particular product, we have to consider supply and demand in the market. So the interaction between supply and demand will help us to understand this point where quantity demanded equals quantity supply. That is decided by producers and consumers. So this point we call equilibrium point. In upcoming lessons, in demand and supply lessons, we are going to learn in detail what is equilibrium point. So this equilibrium point is helping us to determine allocative efficiency point on a PPC curve. So the main difference between allocative efficiency and productive efficiency. In a PPC, there can be many productive efficiency points. Any combination can be on a PPC curve. 
But out of many productive efficiency choices, allocative efficiency is only one choice. So out of these points A, B, C, D, or E, there should be only one choice. So let's assume point C is allocative efficiency point. So this is the difference between productive efficiency and allocative efficiency. discuss one important point productive efficiency allocative efficiency and economic efficiency what is the relationship so the combination of allocative efficiency and productive efficiency known as economic efficiency so if you look at this graph if this is our allocative efficiency And these are productive efficiency points. Combination of these, we can refer as economic efficiency. So in summary, the sum of allocative efficiency and productive efficiency is the economic efficiency. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to subscribe for my channel and stay tuned for upcoming videos. Thank you for watching this small video clip about production possibility curves. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my lesson. Do not forget to drop a comment and your feedback about this video.